So if you want to get a free trigonometry lesson and see an American justify using the metric system, stick around. So I'm here in the main worship area at our church, and as you can see, this room is basically just one long barn. I'm no acoustician, but I figured the first thing that we can do in order to address some of the problems we're having acoustically in this room is to put some panels up on this big flat wall behind me. Hopefully that will cut down on some of the reverb times and bass buildup in this room. Okay, so the first thing I did for this project was use a laser tape measure and get a whole bunch of measurements of the wall, and then I cleaned those up into some diagrams that you guys can see. So based off of all of the measurements for that back wall, I came up with a look of this. I like the size of those panels and the way they fit on this back wall. Now I initially started basing everything off of materials that are available to me, and the only mineral wool insulation that I can get locally from the big box store comes in 15 inch by 47 inch bats. So I designed the lower square panels with a 15 inch by 23.5 inch interior square. That means I can take my insulation, I can make one cut in half, and I can put a half piece of insulation right in each square here. That uses all of the insulation, it means I don't have to make a lot of cuts in it, and it's very efficient. Now, if all you were doing was making square panels, this would be super easy, it would be no big deal to use inches. I can buy my insulation, I can buy my wood, I can cut all of these pieces at 23 and a half inches, and I'm going to need five of those for each of these panels. You'll see the four here, plus I hung things on a French cleat right from here, which is why you need a fifth one, and then two 48 inch pieces for each side. trouble comes in when you need these funny triangle pieces or trapezoids here. Now for most of the world you would say the first thing I should have done is just converted this 15 inch to 47 inch into the metric system and just done everything from that straight away. So it took me longer than that but I did come around in the end. So what I need to know first off is the angle of the top of those panels. So what I did with my tape measures, I found the total width of the room, which is 29.875 feet, the total height from this wall to the floor, which is 12.156 feet, and the total height peak to the floor, which is 19.57 feet. 
So I can figure out this total minus this height, which gives me the A length of this right angle triangle at 7.414 feet. And I can take this measurement in half to give my B side of a triangle, which is 14.937 feet. Uh, I can plug this into a online triangle calculator. That's the easiest thing to use. It'll give you all the right numbers. But basically what it is doing is the inverse tangent of that A over B in order to give you the A angle, which is 26.398 degrees. Now since my degree angle finder that I'm going to set the table saw blade to only has one decimal point anyways, I'm going to round that up to 26.4. And since all of my angles of a triangle need to equal 180, I know this remaining one here is 63.6 degrees. So now that I know that angle of the roof is that 26.4 degree angle, I can go ahead and base all of my acoustic panels off of that. Now this is where I really started to switch everything to the metric system because it's just a whole lot easier. So that overall width becomes 63.5 centimeters. But the first thing I need to figure out is the length of this C board here. So I don't want the total width because it has these boards on the outside. What I want is to go from the inside here. So the inside right here is 59.69 centimeters. So I know my B length, 59.69. I know that angle is 26.4. And from that, I can figure out C equals that B over cosine of angle A, and it gives me 66.64 centimeters. So I know I need a piece that is 66.64 centimeters cut at 63.6 degrees on each end to get this first top part. Now the next trick is to know how long each of these sides needs to be. Taking into account this height plus the spacing here and to the roof, I knew my first edge right here needed to be 13.93 centimeters. Now what I need to do is that same equation with the total width of my panel. Uh, my total width is 63.5 centimeters my B of that triangle. And what I'm trying to figure out is how much longer this side needs to be than this side. So I can take my C is this B side over cosine of that angle. That gives me this measurement here. I'm not too concerned about this 70.89 because that is not a length that I need to cut any boards to. But I need that in order to figure out my A length, which is that C squared minus B squared square root. All of that equals the rise in this panel of 31.5 centimeters. So I know that the difference in height between this first edge and the second edge is 31.5 centimeters. So I can take 13 plus 31 and a half, give me 45. Now I have a spacing between panels of 27.94. So I can do all of that exact same math only with this 27.94. And that gives me an A length of 13.87 centimeters. That means this starting edge here is going to be 13 centimeters longer than this one right here. And you can see you need that. So with the spacing of the panels that lines up nicely all there and that that one is that much longer than the other one. So at that point, once you've done this math and we know these two A lengths here, I can basically start 13 plus 31, gives me that 45. 45 plus 13 gives me 59. 59 plus 31 gives me 92. 92 plus 13 gives me 106. 106 plus 31 gives me 137. 67. I know now all of the lengths of all of these pieces here, and I know I need to cut those one end at 90 degrees, one end at that 63.6 degrees. So this is one of those times where I am really grateful that I have a miter saw 
and I busted this out for this project and that is so I can leave that at 90 degrees in order for all of those cuts and I can leave the table saw set at that 63.6 .6 degree cut which means I can cut one end of all those weird pieces on the table saw other end at the miter saw I got most of my pieces stacked and cut there now it's time to assemble All right, installation day for these panels. I'm not gonna go into too many details about hanging these up because it's really just a lot of measuring and line leveling and figuring out specific to this room and these panels. But I do wanna point out the way that I'm going to secure these is by screwing a French cleat to the wall. So it's just an angled piece of wood like that. And with it bolted to the wall like that, it'll engage the other half of the cleat that I put on all of the panels. So that'll just drop right in like that and lock it on to the wall. And I have a little bit of room for side to side movement in that as well. So we just need to screw on all of these cleats to the wall, 12 of them in total, way up there somewhere. And then I can drop all of the panels into the right place. I also went ahead and took some measurements of the room before and after treatment with a calibration microphone. Got a couple different copies just to be sure. But we can see here looking at the waterfall of this room. It is pretty big 
and has this gross nasty spike at around 250 hertz. So we see that in a lot of these befores. And then if we switch to the after treatment, you can see first of all that the overall reverberation time in the room did go down. That 250 spike is still there, but it's not quite as horrible as before. Except for whatever this one's doing with this weird thing here, but overall pretty good. Then I went ahead and recalibrated the PA system after doing the acoustic treatment, and that one looks like this. So we have a B4 treatment here, pretty big overall, huge spike at 250. After treatment here, everything came down a little bit reverberation wise, and then with the PA calibration, much more even and less reverberation overall. Now if I go to this overlays and look at the RT60 value, which is the decay of reverb over time, and especially if I go at this 250 hertz here, we can see a noticeable difference before treatment, two seconds or 2.1 or whatever, after treatment here, down to 1.4, and up a little bit, um, not sure why that is, back up to 1.8 with the PA calibration, but this 1.4 value here. So overall, you can see these did come down a little bit. Um, it made some positive difference, um, but obviously there is still a lot more that we could do in the room. All right, so hopefully you can see while this didn't solve all of the problems, it certainly was a step in the right direction. I would say all of the exact measurements and math is interesting, but the greatest win with this project is the real world case, which is before we had too much of an issue with feedback in order to use a lavalier microphone. But with putting these panels up and retuning the system, we can now get away with having someone on stage wear a lavalier mic and they're super happy about that. I'm super happy that they're happy about that. So I would consider that a win for this project. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed all these things. You probably did since you're still here at the end of the video. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.